that game was a little more exciting than I expected it to be, considering that going into it, the Ottawa Senators are 1-8-1. and one. one of those eight losses came last night to the Ducks, a 3 to nothing shutout for them. Not helpful, Ottawa. Thank you. Whatever, I thought this game would be way easier, but I should have known better. <laughs> I guess the Kings figured that since Jonathan Quick gets a lot of work and this game should have been an easy win, they were going to put in Kemper. Which, for the most part, I agree with. I think he's a great backup. I, I like the guy a lot. He leaves really fat rebounds that have been scaring me. And by the time we got to the end of the game... I was proved right on the fat rebounds not being a good thing, guys. Shocking, I know. Uh, so it opens first period. Uh, seems more even than it should be, considering that the Senators should be tired and we should be kicking their ass. Um, we had a power play like a minute 41 into it that we did absolutely nothing with. Like, it was pitiful and it made me really want to go actually like coach them myself on how you have a man advantage and what to do with it because it wasn't what they did so that kind of sucked um and they just it seemed like the whole game they had so many chances that they should have put away that they just didn't like we kept getting great breakaways Pearson had a couple and then you're just getting there and you get to the end of it and there's no finish um at one point we already had a goal at this point, which I'll get to, but it's on topic. Um, there were two in a row at the end of the first period where the first one was Tyler Toffoli, and he got to the end, and, and he's right by the net, and he's literally in between the goalie and the net. He had gotten in behind him, and instead of, like, pu putting the puck in around, it, like, skated across and all the way, like, to the other side of the ice. It just... And then Kopitar did a similar thing, like two plays later, where he came down and he looked at his. It I really felt there was like reverse Jedi magic working on the other team, where the, I don't understand how it didn't get in. Martinez started the whole thing with a slap shot that managed to pass like seven players on the ice, but not the post. Just the whole game was a lot of chances that the Kings could not capitalize on. The first one they did capitalize on was a Tanner Pearson goal, but Tyler Toffoli, man, oh, those hands are so slick. He manages to deke the puck like in between a defenseman's legs and still keep control over it, and then this gorgeous cross ice pass, well, kind of cross, cross crease pass, I guess is more accurate, uh, to Tanner, who just has a wide open net because the goalie is, is looking at Pearson, I'm sorry, at Tyler as a threat, and as so he should. Uh, so that was fantastic. We're so excited. But no, we don't get to keep that excitement because uh, they scored right after that. Yeah. Yeah, the Kings could not keep a lead all game. It drove me crazy. Urgh, so frustrating. So it was a very odd sequence. Uh, there was a penalty and then there was the fattest rebound I've ever seen, which Matt Duchesne, who I kind of miss as an avalanche, um, is not going to miss, like, the entire net was wide open. You think sometimes there's a, uh, you say wide open net, but really that's an, that was an understatement compared to how wide open this net was. So of course Duchesne gets it, but in the process, Mitchell is trying to, and by the way, Willie Mitchell, I miss you so much. <laughs> So weird to see a guy named Mitchell in a Kings jersey and not have it be Willie Mitchell and have him be 71 but not Jordan Nolan. It's freaking me out. But anyway, he tried to stop the very, very obvious goal that was going to happen from Duchesne. And in doing so, he didn't actually stop the goal and instead got a penalty. So literally the same second that they score were back on the penalty kill, which thankfully went much better from the first time, but all of this happened in the space of less than two minutes. So we get a goal, and then we get a penalty, and then they get a goal, and then we get another penalty, and it's all just happening very fast. So did not keep our lead for very long uh, in the first period, come to the second period, and it's much choppier. The Kings are not connecting on their passes at all. They're just, their chemistry is lacking a little bit. Um, 
But they finally do get their second goal. It's this weird bounce where Ayafolo's already in the neutral zone and the puck kind of like bounces up to him, kind of around. So he gets this breakaway and it's a beautiful breakaway. And he snaps it and nothing bit net. I don't even, like, it seemed like it should go straight into their goalie, but nope, back of the net, baby. And we're super excited again, and that, again, lasts less than two minutes. Oh my god, keep a lead. Keep a lead. This was the story of the whole game, and when you get to the third period, it's gonna kill you even more. So anyway, the second period lead that they didn't keep happened on a very sloppy turnover. And because it was a sloppy turnover, none of the Kings were in the position that they needed to be in in order to defend the goal. And sure enough, back of the net, and it just, uh, could we stop? Could we stop? No, no, we couldn't. We get to the third period, and it takes a little longer for the Kings to get their go-ahead goal. Maybe five minutes left into it. So things have been getting a little more elevated between the players. There's been some scuffles, but this Dustin Brown, again, parking himself in front of the net, most improved player since Daryl Sutter left. <sighs> again, I don't want to say that I didn't love Daryl Sutter because I did. He brought us two cups and I'm forever grateful, but uh, he did not gel with the team so much in the last few times. And you, you're seeing it this season. This is what you're seeing is the resurgence of the Kings under a new coach. And Dustin Brown is first and foremost there. This is his 12th goal. I believe it's his seventh goal in five games. The shot comes and he somehow manages to tip it in up over the goalie's head. And there's the go-ahead goal and there's, you know, just enough time to screw it up. It took them longer than the two minutes this time. But here's the frustrating part. <laughs> yes, they'd pulled their goalie, but no, we could not get that empty net. And there was eight Point five seconds. Eight point five seconds left in the game. Just, oh, I know this is an East Coast team and it does not matter if we give up a point to them in any way except if we somehow manage to end up tied with Vegas at the end of the season and they had more regulation wins. Whatever. I know it's not important. It's just the principle of eight point five five freaking seconds left and it's because Kemper gave up a really fat rebound again. I was so frustrated. <sighs> so anyway, that happened. We go into overtime and Drew Doughty, who had had a phenomenal game all night, of course, because he's Drew Doughty, uh, but also I think because he was playing against Eric Carlson and he really likes to prove that he should be a Norris Trophy winner. I mean, he is a Norris Trophy winner, but like that he should always be in the race for a Norris Trophy winner against Carlson. So anyway, so much more open ice, which just gives Drew room to play. And he gets it, and there's kind of no one there, and he gets this breakaway, and he goes up, you know, 200 feet of ice, and I didn't know he had it in him. You know, Drew is not known for being that kind of sneaky player with the, um, with, with the shots. He's definitely that, like, slap shot and hope it's going fast enough to get past someone. But I thought this was a very skilled move, and unfortunately, I couldn't get a lot of the video, so you can't see how amazing that breakaway actually was of Drew and just how much effort he put in into it and how fast he was compared to the other guys on the ice like they couldn't get down he didn't have anyone to shoot to and you know a lot of the times drew does tend to take that kind of thing on himself where even if he had someone he's gonna try and make it happen himself and happen it did overtime win seventh game in a row on the seventh day of christmas so uh merry christmas kings fans you're getting a good december uh, <laughs> so far not to sour that, maybe 30 minutes after the game ended, the Kings traded Nick Dowd. So he is, he's gone. He is the, is it third casualty? Camilleri left, Like got waived, and he chose to leave instead of going down to Ontario. Um, yeah, I was kind of shocked by that. I mean, looking at the lineup, especially if we're going to get Clifford back soon and Carter, obviously not until like February or March. Um, we do have a lot of forwards and everybody is fitting into slots incredibly well. The, the Brown Kopitar I follow line is absolutely unstoppable. When a Carter comes back, you're going to have Carter doubt, uh, sorry, Carter to Foley and, and Pearson that seventies line back. And, 
And uh, right now, Gabrick and Lewis and Kempe are playing beautifully together. That's a that's a phenomenal line. I'm, I love it. I love I love Lewis, and I love how fast Kempe is. And Gabrick is a whole new player this season. His resurgence is also fantastic. So that doesn't leave a lot of guys for the that bottom three three line there. So I guess it makes sense. But I really like Nick Dowd, and he has a really cute dog, guys. <laughs> Not that that's why I wanted him to stay, but still. Um, so fare thee well. We got a Subban, not the Subban, you know, uh, but we have a Subban. He's a defenseman. I, I don't know how much time he's going to see uh, up in the NHL, but there you go. Uh, let's go back to Drew Doughty winning the Kings games because that's so much happier. <laughs>